Intel. Here we go. Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing great. Got two, I got a story from the media, from the press about Wells Fargo Bank and something they just did, some massive fines they just paid. And then I've got a story from a subscriber, a screenshot of something that Truist Bank just did to him. And I have a theory, but you know what? I'm gonna get to that in a second, okay? So thank you to everyone that hit the thumbs up button. All right. Well, this is out of the Daily Hoddle. Wells Fargo pays $35 million fine for allegedly overcharging millions of dollars to customers. Just so you know, the banks know exactly what they're doing, if it is right or wrong, if it is legal or illegal. And a lot of the times, these banks do illegal acts knowing that the fine will be much less than the money they can make. Type one if this pisses you off, because it really does me. All right, Wells Fargo is dishing out tens of millions of dollars to settle allegations that the banking giant overcharged its customers excessive fees for investment advice. Do you believe that you take, type two if you think you should take investment advice from Wells Fargo. Type three if you're crazy to take investment advice from Wells Fargo. And just definitely, sure, don't take investment advice from me. I'm just a dude with a bro hawk and a dream. In a news press release, a new press release, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission claims that Wells Fargo collected an additional $26.8 million in advisory fees and overcharging more than 10,900 customers. Now, I know that this fine of $35 million is larger than that number, but I guarantee you Wells Fargo made more money charging people on the back end of products, pre-packaged financial products that they sell. Um, it says the SEC says the overbilling took place when certain financial advisors from Wells Fargo, along with the firms acquired by the lender, agreed to reduce the standard advisory fees for, for some of the banking giant's customers. Although the agreement was put into writing at the time the customer's accounts were opened, Wells Fargo failed to make the changes in its billing system. The SEC also claims that the banking giant did not establish measures or policies that could have prevented the overbilling. Isn't it absolutely insane? insane. We have seen Wells Fargo be charged fines again and again for all kinds of malicious and uh, vicious illegal acts, straight up lying about how many deposits it has, faking accounts. It is insane that anyone banks with Wells Fargo anymore. It just blows my mind. And I'm going to get to that idea of what could really hurt the banks here in a second. Um, it says here, uh, Wells Fargo has agreed to pay the $35 million civil penalty without admitting or denying the charges. Don't you like that? How uh, they get that? The lender also shelled out $40 million, including interest to reimburse customers who paid the additional advisory fees. Okay, here's my idea. Think about this. And then we're going to get to this picture, this screenshot that I took of a subscriber's situation with Truist Bank. It'll blow your mind. Remember a long time ago, I, I started saying it's so important, it's so vital that you get in a bunch of different bank accounts. And the reason why is because if one, um, all of a sudden the, the network goes down, we seem to see stories like this every week now. Oh, our network's down. Oh, none of the ATMs are accessible. There's a glitch. There's a hack, something. Or they limit, well, you're about to see something crazy, your account, right? Well, if you have your money pressed out over a bunch of banks, you're not going to have that problem. You're gonna, oh, okay, this bank's screwing up and trying to screw me over. Okay, I'll go over here and get money over here. This one, we'll get it figured out later. But if I need money now, especially during a, a economic collapse, I've got, my, I've got money. I've got at least access to some money. And the more banks you have, the more divided, the more diversified you are, the better you'll be. Now, think about this. What if everybody uh, took, because a lot of people I see have all of their money into one bank. What if you took your money? What if we all took our money and we divided over 10 banks? especially if we focus on the smaller banks. Deposit ratio requirements are very important. It means banks can only, uh, you know, put out so much in loans compared to how much they've got in deposits, right? That, that ratio, that would tank these big banks. If people took all their money out and it's the same amount of money, right? It's just spread out over the banking system. There would be a liquidity crisis. There would be a run. They would say, oh, it's a run on the bank. No, it's not. People are just pulling money out and spreading it out. And that in and of itself could cause a crisis. But at the same time, that crisis is only put is only out there because the banks are so highly leveraged, right? I think that's so important to understand. All right, so check out this picture that I've got. This is from a subscriber. And this is, I, I'm going to show you right here, um, the top this is his uh, truest account, right? Truest account. This is what it says. He was trying to pull money out of the bank. You can't read it. It's a horrible screenshot. Mrs. Ninja sent this to me. Uh, it came in my email and I, I couldn't get access to it for some reason. Sorry. It came in a different one. It's not on my phone. 
But you could see here uh, one time withdrawal he was doing, and it was for forty nine nine zero, right under five thousand dollars. And it says here in red, uh, the transfer amount exceeds twelve thousand five hundred dollars. Please enter a valid amount. Now it's interesting. You're like, well, that's not high. This is why. It says down here, it says transfers are limited. Now this is Truist Bank. Transfers are limited to $5,000 per transaction. And you're like, well, he's right under. That's why it's at 4990 number. Here's the next line. And this is where it gets scary. It's transfers are limited to $5,000 per day. All right, that's what Truist is doing. It doesn't matter if you got a million bucks in the bank. You can only transfer $5,000 a day. And you go, well, wait a minute. His is 4990. Here's the next line and 12,500 per rolling 30 business day cycle. Tell me right now how long a 30 day, I'm gonna open the window, boy, it's getting hot in here. I'm gonna crack that thing. All right, so let's see, 30 days. Now everyone knows someone's with me. Guess who's with me in the car? <laughs> how long is a rolling 30 day cycle? You gotta add in those weekends, right? Those don't count. So you are limited not only to 5,000 per day, but let's say you took out $5,000 a day for two days. Thanks Rod for the super chat. You're at 10,000, right? Now on the third day, you can only take out 12 or 2,500. And then you have to wait another 30 rolling days to transfer money. Now, is this different than going down to the bank and pulling out cash? Absolutely. But think about this. How much cash do you think is in these banks? See, this is why I've been beating the drums for over a year, year and a half to diversify your bank accounts. When panic ensues, there's a, a liquidity crisis, you are going to be, <laughs> they're guessing is this Johnny Bravo's dad. <laughs> Not even close, <laughs> but I am gonna see Johnny uh, later today. So that is sort of close. Um, I am, I think about this. The banks are over leveraged, they're hurting, we're in a crisis. You go to get your money and people are panicking. The social media will explode. When this happens, the media will explode and people are going to panic for like a week or two week period, trying to get money desperately out of the banks. You're gonna be able to capitalize on that fear. There's gonna be people banging down. You'll literally, remember those photos? Everybody type five if you remember this. Those, the videos of people banging on the doors of the bank during the Great Depression um, or the, the pictures of it, right? All crowding the bank to see what's going on. That's gonna happen. We're gonna have those today. We'll throw a, a black and white filter and if you're not looking closely to the, uh, the clothes, you're gonna go, holy cow, this is just like the Great Depression, the crash of 29. Um, I want you prepared for this and not scared. I want you foaming at the mouth excited about this. But I wanted to share that with you and I wanna thank the subscriber that sent that to me. And that's just a screenshot right there. Truest Bank limits transfers from your money. It's not your money. It's not your money. If you got a million dollars in the bank, you got a hundred thousand dollars to make, you know all that's yours, if you panic, is 5,000 bucks a day. You're limited to $5,000 a day and up to $12,500 per rolling 30 days. And remember, this is why Truist is doing this. They don't have deposits, they rent them. They literally rent them. Think about that. Get ready guys. This crash is getting bigger and bigger by the day. There's tons of news about the banks. Have a great day. The Economic Ninja is out.